Just joining us now, first on CNBC, is Michael Venato, CS, uh, Biogen CEO. Uh, not, congratulations to all of us if this is, if this yes. is true. Um, um, but there is a lot of, um, I guess, skepticism. And I don't know whether with the analyst community, whether those guys, uh, you know, sometimes skepticism is good when they don't understand. But they're, they're not buying into the, the new results necessarily. Some are calling it possibly just chance or not statistically proven at this point. Did it really work uh, in reversing Alzheimer's for, for these additional, this additional data that you saw? So thank you for having me. What it demonstrates again is that the road to breakthrough innovation is full of twist and turn. And uh, it's, a, it's a process. And here the persistence and the passion and the spe specialization of the company in that space basically demonstrates that um, it leads to success eventually. Okay. Today we have okay. hope and opportunity for all the patients affected. Well, let, let, me, let me see whether we can drill down on this. So it's a monoclonal antibody that actually is designed to go after beta amyloid plaques, which are seen in, in Alzheimer's patients. You're telling me it actually, the, uh, uh, it actually removes the plaques. There was some speculation that maybe that's not, it could be that you get Alzheimer's and the plaques then come about as a result of Alzheimer's, not an actual cause. You're convinced beta amyloid is the key to, to dealing with Alzheimer's? More than, ev more more than, than ever. ever what, what we demonstrate is that this CNS penetrant monoclonal antibody who's binding, Central nervous system who's binding, yep. yes, who's binding to the right part of the amyloid beta, the aggregated form of amyloid beta, okay. is able to erode and eliminate the plaque, the plaque, leading to the benefits we see in terms of cognition for the patients. Why did it... It uh, reduce basically the decline, and we can see effects such as on memory, orientation, language, but also functionally the ability to take care of Not oneself. in all the studies you did, though. The Sorry? other studies right. didn't show the efficacy. Well, because, because these, are, these were different monoclonal antibodies. And they were? From, yeah, with all the products. Oh, but I think Joe means one of the phase three studies so wasn't successful. Yeah, yeah, and there are many reasons for that. And the futility analysis that we did conduct was wrong. This was a mistake. This is what we know now. The so, importance okay. is that working with the FDA over months, we are now on the path forward towards filing in the Can U.S. You explain in very sort of layman terms for those of us who don't understand. At some point, you, you must be saying to yourself, this isn't working, but actually we're not sure. Maybe we did this wrong. What was the, like, what actually happened? You're in the room. Somebody comes. To, just tell us the story of how this happened. The story is pretty simple, is that we did the pre-specified futility analysis based on a smaller data set. And what we learned at posteriori is that the patients were not exposed enough to high dose of aducanumab. Then by the time we communicate and we had blinded data of a larger data set, we started to have some hope. Mm -hmm. And we consulted with scientific leaders and with the FDA with the first type C meeting mid-June. And following, crossing all the bars of the T's, dotted the I's with the FDA, leading to a second type C the day before yesterday with a path forward towards filing for regulatory approval in the U.S. But the this problem is was a big they didn't hope. have enough, the dosage wasn't high enough? That was, Correct. Yeah. Correct. It has to be sufficient and sustained dose of high dose of aducanumab to remove the plaque. Therefore, the hypothesis is confirmed. Tell us more about your interactions, if you can, with the FDA. Uh, you said that they indicated it was reasonable to go forward with the filing based on the data you have now. Do you anticipate that you'll be able to get approval with just these data? And then will that be enough to convince insurance companies to pay for what will likely be a, a fairly expensive drug? It was a thorough engagement with the FDA over months. And uh, the evidence came over time. We collected tremendous and, and complex set of data, including biomarkers and imaging. And the FDA dedicated a lot of quality time to engage with us so that we come to the second meeting. It was not just a corridor talk where you can get, try your chance and go for file. This was a thorough engagement. Right. And as a CEO, I'm reasonably confident really? that this can lead to a market approval one they day. They say 
try everything. They say, you know, turn in the results, we'll give you an answer. But it does, they, there's, in, in this, there's no in, uh, implicit recommendation from the FDA that they're going to okay this at this point. Well, the they, FDA they'll look at everything, right? They'll it. look at everything and Absolutely. say, yeah, go ahead, file, and, and then we'll let you know. But by is the it 50-50 way, or you think it's more than <laughs> You're the CEO. By the way, yeah. by the way, since the beginning of the process, the FDA has the entire data set from the studies. Mm -hmm. The entire data. So the data we have, they have. Good so we bad. worked in full transparency with the regulator. Now we have to respect the process, obviously. And concerning the, uh, and the most important is that based on this data and this work, the FDA is encouraging us to redose the patients from the two studies. What a sign. And we talked with one of those patients yesterday who was in the trial, thought the drug was helping him, then had to stop in March. He's elated that yeah. he gets to I mean, potentially go back on the drug. 60 million people a year globally, is that, that's per year. Yeah, so very and, unfortunately. And 70 to 80 percent of dementia is Alzheimer's. Yep. That, and since we started the discussion, five or six patients were diagnosed in this country. And a mild cognitive impairment with early uh, um, mild Alzheimer is 10 million patients in the U.S. only. Right. So give so, me a pie-in-the-sky market cap potential <laughs> for a drug. It could be $100 billion, couldn't it? If, if you had something that worked for Alzheimer's, what, what could uh, it be? You will understand Total. that I will not discuss the stock. What would it be, Meg? Will you? I will not discuss the stock. <laughs> what I, could the market potential be for, for an Alzheimer's drug? Well, for an Alzheimer's, you have to, there's works. a spectrum of, of how well things potentially right. work. And that's a question, actually, I want to ask Michelle, which is, the data are not uh, obviously straightforward. And so if you get on the market, there could be questions from insurers about who should be covered for this drug, who should get the drug. I think pretty much anybody with Alzheimer's will want a drug that's been shown to help, but it's not a cure. So do you need more data to convince insurers to potentially pay for this? For the time being, the only uh, trial that we plan to do is to redose the patients, if it is a trial. So we'll redose the patients. This is what we are planning. And we are confident that with the data that we communicated, including the 40% improvement versus placebo on the activities of daily living, but think what it means for the patients, for the caregivers, mm -hmm. the ability to get out of the home on, on oneself, the ability to eat alone, the ability to dress up alone, uh, to take care of their own finances. This is tremendous.